Now, the only other thing we need to look at is what happens if we want to do a confidence interval for the difference in the means. That's where we started. Okay, that's where we started. Okay, so if we want to do a confidence interval for the difference in the means, I'll just pull that to one side. So if I want to do a confidence interval for the difference in mu1 and mu2. Okay, mu1 and mu2. So given two random variables, so let's say, for example, I have a look at, let's say, battery A and battery B, okay? So I select N1 objects of um, battery A, so whatever that might be, and N2 objects of battery B, so whatever, you know, however many samples I collect, okay? I know that uh, battery A, if I take the mean of those N1 samples, will end up with some sample mean. And I know, and it's equal to something, and I know that if I do the same thing for sample uh, B, uh, battery B, that I'll end up with, again, some sample mean of those, um, of those N2 batteries, okay? Now, let's just assume for the moment that this is kind of a value bigger than 30 and this is a value bigger than 30. I can make a quick adjustment at the end, which I'll talk you through. But let's just assume that this is like 100 and this is like 200. Let's assume that the sample mean came out as like, I don't know, 300 and sample mean of this came out as like 320 okay and let's assume as well that we do know what the um, population standard deviation is so let's assume that I do know that Sigma 1 is equal to say like 3 and Sigma 2 is equal to say like 5 okay so this is what is known okay I'm confident enough that I know these of course if I didn't know these then I'd have to use kind of a T adjustment okay but let's assume it's known for the moment so really all I'm going to do is I need to look, first of all, at the difference in the mean values. Okay, I need to look at the difference in the mean values, so the sample mean values. So I need to look at the difference in mean 1 and the difference in the sample mean of, mean to, of, of um, sample 2. Okay, and the same thing here. So whereas before, with our, um, with our confidence intervals, we just had an X bar because we were only looking at one, one type of thing which we're looking at, like one battery or one type of suite. But now we're introducing the fact, what happens if I want to look at two different um, sort of products and I want to compare them together, okay? Well, this is now what we need to do. We need to look at uh, the difference in the sample means in order to work out what the difference in the population means is going to be, the confidence interval for that. And then all I'm going to do is add on, sorry, take away down here, and add on some margin of error. Now, what is the margin of error? Well, it's going to be exactly the same thing as before. So it's going to be like um, whatever your confidence interval dictates your uh, units of standard deviation are going to be. So if I assume, for example, it's going to be a 95% um, confidence level. If I assume that the confidence level is 95%, then I know, uh, because we can use the Z distribution here, I know that the units of standard deviation above and below the mean is 1.96 going to be looking at 1.96 units of standard deviation above and below the mean and then I just need to multiply that by the standard error now have a think what is the standard error remember it's a bit like the uh, the standard deviation except now because we're looking at differences in means we have to call it the standard error but it works in the same kind of way well the standard error is just going to be this thing here right it's just going to be this thing here so it's going to be sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2 except it's going to be the square root of that thing there because remember that's the variance and this is really just like standard deviation so it's going to be the square root of this thing here so if i just copy it across the standard error is going to be sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2 and of course because it's standard error i need to square root all of that thing because it's a bit like standard deviation okay so in other words, this is really just how we calculate it. If you want the big long formula, um, it looks like this. So x1 take away x2 bar minus, it's going to be this thing, so square root of sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2. Okay, And then the difference in the means has got to lie somewhere in between these two things. Not quite sure where, Okay, but it's got to lie somewhere in the difference in between these two things. And again, I get x1 take away x2 bar plus sigma over sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2. Okay, So that's the big long formula for the confidence interval. But can you see that it's no more difficult than what we were doing with just one? Only difference now is I'm looking at a difference in the two means. But it's a similar kind of idea. So I set it up in exactly the same way. I set the uh, sort of amount that I add on or subtract in exactly the same way. So I've got units of standard deviation. Then I multiply that by the standard error. It's just this case, the standard error is given by this thing here. Okay. Now, if you remember, if you remember, we still have to follow this kind of idea. 
okay? So the only difference now, so if we have um, in either of our two samples, so either N1 or N2, if we have that either of those two samples is less than 30, then we have to use the T distribution. Okay, so if either of the two samples is less than or equal to 30, we have to use the T distribution. Now, the only difference now with the T distribution, ordinarily, the degrees of freedom is N minus 1. So what is the degrees of freedom if we have two separate um, sort of sample sizes? Well, in that case, the degrees of freedom will just be the difference is N1 minus 1. So this is degrees of freedom. Uh, it's going to be N1 minus 1 plus N2 minus 1. Okay, and of course, if I add these two things together, I get N1 plus N2 minus 2. Okay, so that there is how I calculate the degrees of freedom. I look at the degrees of freedom for the first distribution. I look at the degrees of freedom for the second distribution. Then I just add those two things together. That's going to be the, de the degrees of freedom. Okay, and then if I sort of expand that out, I get N1 plus N2, N1 plus N2, and the negative 1 plus negative 1, which makes my negative 2. Okay. Um, likewise, I'll also have to use the degree. I'll also have to use the t distribution if I don't know what sigma is. So if I don't know what sigma is, then I'll have to use this kind of thing, where the standard error is just really s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2. Now and then square rooted. Now just be aware the standard error for a t distribution can be calculated in a slightly different way, and it's using something called the pooled standard deviation. Now, we're not going to look at that too much in this course, okay, um, just because we've kind of run out of time. Uh, so the stalled standard deviation, or the pooled standard variance. But that isn't a completely equivalent way of working out the standard error if you don't know what sigma is, if you have to look at the t distribution. Um, but like I say, don't worry about it too much, this pooled standard deviation, this pooled um, variance. Just use this formula here, okay? But just be aware there is another way of calculating it in case you're reading it in books or something like that. So in other words, okay, if you want to look at the, the confidence interval for a difference of two means, you're going to say, well, okay, it's going to be x1 bar take away x2 bar, so the difference in the sample means, plus or minus some margin of error, where the margin of error is calculated exactly the same way as before. It's just now the standard deviation, standard deviation or the standard error you have to calculate using this formula here. So it looks a bit gnarly and a bit horrible, particularly if I just look at that formula there. It looks a bit horrible, but honestly, it makes sense compared to what we were doing before.